A few days ago, I read a quote that made me smile. It says, it's never too soon to give up hope. Never too soon to give up hope, yeah. These words also made me think about our human propensity to give up when we face obstacles or roadblocks. You probably went through the experience of belonging to a group that had an exciting new vision or proposing a new initiative. And when the ID encounters some initial resistance, someone will immediately say, well, it will never work. Why should we bother? Why should we, should we make an effort if they will not even listen to us? You might have worked on a project that did not unfold as expected, and you have been told to trust the process, there's a way out of this, a solution will eventually come and, and emerge, that, that there's a, some light at the end of the tunnel, and someone will say, yeah, the light at the end of the tunnel is a train that will run over us, we're doomed, we better you know, give up before when we still can do it. This sort of hopelessness can be very contagious. We might be truly convinced of the validity of our beliefs and aspiration, but at the same time, we're also influenced by the people and the society surrounding us. We can invest ourselves in the construction of a better world based on inclusivity, justice, peace, and then we turn on the TV and we're told over and again that we ought to be scared of stranger and the next tragedy can happen here at any time. We're told by our politicians that our, systems are, our system is broken. Even in our church, we seems to be stuck with this narrative of, of decline and death of the church. And then, in front of all of this, we begin to wonder, is it possible that I am wrong? Uh, if he and she and they all believe this, well, they cannot be all wrong. Uh, they, 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 they must read the situation a little more accurately. They must be right. And we are sometimes tempted to give up, even if we still believe, even if we know that hopelessness is not the situation, even if we're hearing this little voice from inside inviting us to keep hope. Hopelessness plays an important part in today's reading from the Gospel according to Luke. The story of the death and raising of Lazarus is not necessarily the easiest one to understand. I will grant you this. Jesus and his disciple, the text told, tells us, were on the other side of the Jordan, outside of Judean territory. And over there, they receive a message from Martha and Mary of Bethany. They wrote, Lazarus, your friend, our brother, is gravely ill. And surprisingly, Jesus responds to this disturbing news with uh, apparent indifference. His answer feels like, eh, whatever. And for two more days, Jesus hangs in the place where he was before finally deciding to go. And quite obviously, in this text, the disciples don't want to follow their master back in Judea. They rapidly remind him what happened during his previous visit in Jerusalem just, just a few verses ago. The crowd tried to stone him. And for the disciple, those people were a lost cause. They will never listen to Jesus. They will never see the light. So why should he care or bother about them? 
Nevertheless, Jesus says, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep and I'm going there to awaken him. And the disciple re replied, well, Jesus, you don't have to go. If he fall asleep, it's a good sign. The worst of his illness has passed. Let him rest, let him sleep, stay here. Well, once again, Jesus has to draw the line between the dots for his, his disciple by telling him that Lazarus is dead. Well, the disciples surely believe that, okay, it's sad that Lazarus is dead, but since it's dead, what can Jesus do? So you can stay here. <laughs> Eventually, Jesus has to put his feet down like so many parents, I guess, and says, okay, enough of this, we are going. And Thomas, probably speaking for the rest of the group, says, the master wants to go, so let, oh, let us go with him and die with him because there's no way this journey can end well. There's no hope that there will be another outcome. Yuppie doo. So Jesus and the disciple eventually arrives at uh, Bethany. He's welcomed by Martha and Mary, and both of them separately rebuked Jesus for his tardiness with uh, passive-aggressive comments. Lord, if you have been here, my brother would not have died. But since you do not show up on time, well, I guess he's dead now. Hmm? What's the point to have a powerful friend if you cannot get a little miracle once in a while? Maybe it's too much to ask. Hmm? Jesus tried to comfort Mary by saying, your brother will rise again. But Martha doesn't want to listen. She replied, I know he will rise in the resurrection in the last day, blah, 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 blah. But today he is dead. His body has been in the tomb for four days. His body starts to decay. It stinks. There's simply no more hope for him. It's all over. As we read the story, we cannot but feel the presence of a dark and gloomy cloud wrapping up everyone. Jesus tried to speak, to explain, to reassure, but nobody seems to listen. The people's hopelessness only generates even more hopelessness. And to break this cycle, Jesus has to do something big. Something that will catch the attention of everyone. Something spectacular that will force all to understand that it's never too late. There's always hope. So Jesus decided to bring back Lazarus to life. Jesus says, take away the stone. Jesus cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And then he orders the people present to unbind him and let him go. Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection and, and the life. Anyone believing in me, even if they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Jesus was not necessarily speaking of immortality or his own resurrection, but about the different way to engage the world. Through him, his disciple of all time have become convinced that brokenness, despair, death, does not have to add the last word. Because of Jesus, we are still allowed to dream of a world based on equality, equity, mercy, justice, and peace. We know that when we struggle, when we face tragedy, when we reach the deepest point in our existence, we can still believe and hope, which is maybe the most irrational and unyielding of all emotions, a mystery that makes life bearable for those lost in a be bewildering universe. After the raising of Lazarus, Many came to believe in Jesus' message. And this powerful sign set off a chain of event 
leading eventually to Jesus' arrest and crucifixion. Jesus has become too dangerous for too many because hope is maybe the most powerful thing in the whole universe. With hope, our lives has meaning. With hope, nothing cannot stop us. With hope, nothing is impossible. With hope in our lives, we can continue our journey forever. This is the gift that Jesus gives us today. And for this, thanks be to God and amen.